All right, guys, we got a couple people popping in here. Um, I know this was last minute. I will post this back to the Carving Friends website. Um, in the event that it freezes, we've been having some, uh, I think I've got my internet issues, hopefully all worked out. Um, with that being said, you know, fingers crossed that there's no weird things that, that take place. And I'm going to get in here behind it. I will peek in. I'm not, probably not going to be able to answer a whole lot of questions as I get in here. Uh, once I start focusing on carving, um, I'd originally made this, uh, post a couple of days ago, starting out with, you know, this, this cowboy here. I did a second one. I left a little knob on the bottom of it for a little fence post or something. Did another one, a little bit bigger chunk of wood, but wider, not taller. This one is, uh, it's dead on three and a half inches. And then I did this one today, just goofing around with an open mouth, some teeth, barely visible, kind of smiling with his uh, eyes partially closed. I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail on um, facial expression because, you know, there's a, a lot of those videos out there. I just want to go and kind of power through this guy and show you that we don't have to have a, a bunch of crazy detail to get a quick shape in these guys. What I do, obviously this is my center point, but when we're cutting on the triangle, don't take for, or don't take it as stock value that this is going to be the same as this. Sometimes they work out really good, but I cut these on the bandsaw. So mine tend to, one side is a little bit off kelter or cattywampus, whatever the, the case may be. So I'll take real close and I'll draw a line just all the way down. And if you see that line isn't straight with the wood, I'll do the same thing, keeping my finger in the same spot. So now I've got a point on both sides. So I know from here to there is the same distance as opposed if we're lining something, I uh, come in a little bit over here and a little bit over here and your wood's off, your, your carving's going to look weird. So we can just take a real easy little cut, knock those off to your line. So now you know that you're pretty much centered wherever you go. The first thing I want to do is I want to come down about a quarter of an inch like so and just draw me a line across there and about a quarter, eh, let's be technical, um, a solid half inch. So a half inch there and on the other side, just give me a, a half inch reference line. This will be where my hat brim starts and then this will be the top of my hat here. So you can come in just below that or you can take the pencils if you like. If you're one of those who like pencil lines as reference, we're gonna draw a little arch down this way and we're gonna bring the arch down about right there. And then let's say the cowboy hat is gonna wrap back this way and back this way. So for you guys or gals at home who like specific measurements, that here is from where the bottom of the cowboy hat's gonna come down, it's two and three eighths. So <clears throat> really easy. We're gonna, we're cutting with the grain. So these are gonna come off really, really quick, just like so. If you wanna get technical in here and you want that cut super nice, you can go ahead and take your soft V right through there. Same way on the other side, we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna come to this point right here. So now we've literally got a stop up here. We wanna take this part up here above that line and we're gonna take it back. You can do scoop cuts right in here. You can take a gouge and run it across there really quick 
doesn't matter. But what we're wanting to do is we're gonna push that hat, the top part of the hat away. I don't like the way that's sounding, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the gouge and go back. Um, you want to, you're going, we're going to fit the head in that hat. So I wouldn't suggest going crazy far back just for reference. We went back dead on half an inch. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting the face underneath this. We're going to come below this line. You can come about an eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna follow that line about an eighth of an inch all the way around on the inside. And this is where our face is eventually going to live. So if we have a face that's in here, we know the eyes are gonna be about center, which are about there. Then we're gonna have a nose. And again, these are just quick down and dirty reference points, like so. And then our chin's gonna be about right in here. And again, we can manipulate that hat anywhere. But what we wanna do is we wanna start taking this back and I'm gonna start taking it from the tip of the nose, which is down here. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna start making, I'm not gonna come straight into that hat, I'm gonna come slightly down. With a couple of quick cuts, you can get in there pretty deep. I wanna get down in there deep enough to where, when you look at it from the side, the hat is gonna be in the forehead, okay? So with that big chunk, we can knock off the tip of that hat just like that. So now it's not a point, it's not gonna be in your way. You don't have to worry about breaking it a lot deeper later on, okay? So from the tip of the nose, and here at this point, I can manipulate the nose anywhere I want it within that field, but I want a rough, a rough guide. I said the nose originally was gonna be here. I'm gonna bring that nose up a little bit, cutting slightly downward. I'm gonna put another little triangle right in there. I wanna start checking my profile at this point. Slide each side up to that point right there. Um, once you eliminate this, if it helps you out to draw that center line back in, do it. Um, I typically just eyeball them, but I'll also tell you that I typically have a face that gets a little bit crooked because a lot of times I'm too lazy to keep in that center point. I just get it close. Now what I want to do is I want to narrow this face this way. And the way I do that is I want that hat behind it. I know that there's going to be an ear on each side, right in line where the um, eye's going to be. So I take a soft V and I start coming in here because this side is going to be the hat. So with that soft V, I just start coming on that inside line that we've done first of all. And then the same way down through here, we're just gonna take a soft V on the side. Notice I'm not worried about coming in the bottom anymore. I wanna establish how wide is this face or this head gonna be. And typically it's gonna be right in here where the hat is. So the side of this face is gonna fall in line with that hat. A lot of people do this different. They carve the hat first and then carve the, uh, the face underneath it. This is no different uh, than carving the face and then redoing the hat. However you get there, these two need to line up, okay? With the same thing, I know that I want an ear sticking out on each side and I want some sideburns in there. So I'm gonna come using this same angle away from the face, but I'm gonna just take those original two lines from here underneath the hat and using the blade of that soft V, I'm gonna keep going back toward the wood to get that ear pretty thin. We don't need a, a really big bunch of wood for the ear in there, okay? So we can nip those off, pick them, whatever, just, touch them in there. So now if we look, we've got this step in here. We haven't came through with the, um, the line separating it. We'll get to that when we figure out where the chin is because you can adjust this hat up or down um, depending on how far the hat would be tipped back on his head or, or forward or, or what have you. So now that we've got the 
sides of the face established under the hat. Guys, uh, give me half a second. I gotta let my dog outside real quick. I don't know if it picked up on it, but she was steady scratching at the door and it's driving me bonkers and probably anybody who could hear it. So now that we've established the width of the head underneath the uh, hat with the, um, the soft V or the soft V here, we want to start shaping the head. Now you can do that with a knife. You can do it with a gouge, however you want, but I want to go deeper because we don't have any, you know, we got minimum profile here. So what I want to do is start taking these side cuts just like that. Cutting down back in. And what that's going to do is it's going to push that nose, bridge that nose further in like so and give us more of a profile. If you don't like that profile, by all means, go a little deeper on the bridge of the nose. It's, it's entirely up to you how deep you actually want to go. I'm going to take the sides of these off because that's the bandsaw marks. I want a good, clean working surface there. I should have did that beforehand, but, you know, I didn't. So we're going to do it now. So now that we've got that, I want to separate the um, eyebrows here. I'm not trying to go into the bridge of the nose, but slightly above. I just want to separate those two just by pushing that out right there. A little tickle with the knife and it comes right out. So that is our progress so far. Easy peasy. I got a question here. What do you mean by soft V? Very good question. Um, let me reach back to my carving box and I'll explain it. This is your typical V tool. If you look, this one's a 90 degree. So it's got a, it's got a point and it lays flat right across there. This happens to be a 90 degree V tool. It comes to a, let me see if you can see that. It comes to a point on the tip down here. Okay. What a soft V does, and they come available in, in many sizes by many different manufacturers. If you look at this, let me get the light over here. If you look at this one, and let me, there you go. If you look at that one, you see how the belly or the point is rounded? That is what they call a soft V. I rough out, goodness gracious, when I'm doing a big carving, I'll rough out you know, 50 or 60% of the low areas or the valleys of your carving with this as opposed to a soft, as opposed to, I apologize, of a regular B because that's a, that's a permanent line. You know, that's a, a nice crisp line. And if you want to move it within the carving, it, you, you set yourself up for a permanent line down in there. So I use the soft V so it don't give you a hard line in these areas. So that's a uh, hope. I hope I explained the soft V there. Um, back to the face, we know that the eyes is going to be the narrowest part of the face, right on the side of the eyes in that temple area. So I'm going to take whatever size gouge I have. This one's going to be a larger one. If you have a smaller one, you can just continue that sweep down. But what I want to do is knock off where we created here and then back in, I want to knock off that high spot and it's going to give you the illusion of the face being thinner. Now you can see that this side looks a lot thinner than this one, and we didn't take out hardly any wood there. Just, we popped it from a, a straight plane and then knocked off that corner upside down um, to get to the other side. We're just taking that wood out in the temple area, and just two little cuts dramatically changes your face entirely. So now what I want to do is I want to establish the bottom of this chin area back to the knife. So if his mouth is going to be right in here, let's put a mustache on this guy. So we're going to say the bottom of his chin is going to be about right there. Don't get in the habit of coming up here and doing a big undercut. If you're doodling, remove the wood that you want to remove, but don't remove the wood that you don't know what you want to do with it yet. If you know you don't need that wood, by all means, take it off. But if you 
are in the habit of just removing a big, large amount of wood in there, you kind of miss the mark on adding some stuff like, hey, maybe I want a bandana. You know, this is a cowboy, so maybe I want a bandana in here. Maybe I want a coat. If you just come down here and start taking all that wood off, you can't add it back. So I typically only take wood off in very tight cuts like so, because now I can add, you know, whether it's a collar, you know, if I want to come in here with a neckline, whatever the case may be, I've got the wood to do that with, as opposed to coming way down here and chopping all that wood off. All right. Um, okay. Thank you for, okay. All right, guys, I said I was going to look um, and answer questions. I'm going to look back to make sure I'm not pausing, first of all. So now that we're here, if we look, that's, you know, that's not a whole bunch of technical stuff. You know, you just get the shapes and the blocks in there. Now I want to angle these eyebrows back up. So above where the eye is going to be, I want to take a nice crisp cut right in there, like so. And if we see, we've added some shadow in that area. And now this brow is looking like it's rounded. I'll do the same thing over here, but I'm going to do it upside down because I'm constantly flipping my carvings upside down to do the uh, opposite side. So there we go. And let me get it. There we go. So now we've got a couple hangy, hangers or fuzzies or whatever, you know, we call those guys. Don't get to a point where we're chasing those. We want good clean cuts. But if we start chasing one little area in a corner, and we, we just get frustrated on that one area, it kind of takes away from the main carving. You can clean all this stuff up because we're going to come back here and cut the ears in, which is going to get rid of those tight corner spots. So don't, you know, I don't want to say don't waste the time because nothing's wasted in carving, but get to a point where you're saying that's not a major issue because we're going to come back here and add something in later. Then you can clean it up. Um, anyway. So I'm going to take just the tip of that nose off, and I'm talking just a tiny bit because we don't have a pointy, pointy nose. Um, for the visual people, I'm going to measure. You can either come in here like this and measure, you know, using your finger as a break or a, a measuring piece and say that one side's going to be there. We're going to flip it out, and we're going to say that one side's going to be there. And then you have a pretty centered nose. And if you notice on this side, my, my cut don't go the way, all the way to that. So don't rely on your cut that you made. Cause if your cut's not correct, which mine is not here and you just establish that nose within your cut, you're going to end up with a nose that's not balanced. So the, the, the pencils do work, but again, I wouldn't recommend drawing the mouth on here, the mustache, um, everything that you're going to do, because the more pencil lines you put on here is the more pencil lines that are going to get rubbed off on our glove, and then they're going to get rubbed back onto the place where we're holding it. And then, you know, if this side's clean, it's going to have pencil lines. So with that being said, we're going to come back in here, straighten out that mouth line. And it's just a little cut. So now the sides of the nose or the bottom of the nose equals our lines there. You can, you can start this nose and, and carve a nose 30,000 different ways. There's people that use gouges. There's people that use knives only. Whatever, whatever method you use is the method that I would recommend if that's what you're comfortable with. Um, what I typically do is not carving into the nose or upward. I just carve a little cut right there and a little cut right here. Again, not carving into the nose or, so everything on the tip of the nose, so to speak, gets carved away from the nose in every direction. We're not gonna carve into that nose. Even on these side nostril cuts, we're not gonna cut into the nose. Um, a real easy thing that I like to do if I'm doing a mustache is I'll come across the bottom. So if his mouth is gonna be here, the bottom of his mustache is gonna be on the bottom of the lip. So come beyond his nose just a little bit, and then let's do some hard down lines. And then from here, we can come down 
and we can come down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take care of all of this stuff in one fell swoop. And if you look closely, y'all may not be able to see it on camera, but I'm a little crooked, so this mustache, I've, I've drew one or two lines there, so I wanna make sure I hit it on the outside of that line. Again, you can measure it like we did before and make sure that it's lined up, but you don't have to go crazy, crazy with it. Um, with the VTOOL, oh, sorry, I got a camera there. With the VTOOL, again, no cuts go into the nose. I'm gonna take the side of the VTOOL and I'm gonna lay it with the same angle of that nose and I'm gonna come straight up. And if you notice, I'm gonna get, here we go. I'm not coming into the nose. That side wing is following the same angle as the nose. Same way here, I'm gonna pull it back. I'm gonna lay it on the nose, come down here, and then cut my cut up. So what that does is that tucks the nose into that cheek. Now you can come in here, I'm gonna get a little closer. Again, not changing this angle, I'm gonna come with the same angle that I took there. I'm gonna get that point right in the corner. And then I'm gonna come into that VTOOL cut right here. And I'm gonna take that triangle out. Now this is gonna be more of a steep triangle because we want that mustache to feel like it's coming off of his mouth. We don't wanna carve all that away and then carve a mustache, then it's gonna look like he has no chin. You have to keep in mind that if we got hair under there, or we still have a lip underneath it. So it doesn't need to come again from way down here with a cut, it needs to come up into here. Now we want nice crisp triangles right in there. And if we look at our profile, there you go. So now what we wanna do is we wanna knock out this mustache real quick. Again, the mustache hangs over the mouth, so I'm not gonna cut straight in and then worry about a bunch of feathery cuts. I'm gonna use this blade and the top blade up here, the cutting blade is gonna be laid down with the profile of this. And if you notice, there's one, two, three sides as opposed to me trying to make that thing perfectly round to begin with. So I'm gonna cut three cuts there, up each side and across the middle. Now, with the mustache here, I'm gonna flip it over upside down. Again, I want my cut to be rounding this chin, so I'm not gonna come in and cut the mustache, I'm gonna cut right down beside and make the mustache appear like it's off of the face as opposed to having just a deep valley in there. You know, when we're using VTools, they're, they're greatly, they're, they're really useful tools, but if we just use the VTool straight in every time and then try to come back with the knife and make those cuts, it, it kind of slows you down. So you can take the VTool, which I do a lot, come straight off the nose and put that little tiny separation in the mustache right through there. Now, if you're lazy like me, you can just lay the VTool over on its side and cut that cut out like so, as opposed to switching back between knives and gouges and knives and gouges. Um, if you can use a, a tool and make it get you four or five different tools, so to speak, into one, you know, use that. Don't, you know, you don't have to go back and forth between a lot of different tools. Um, I'm gonna step away for a half a second. I gotta open the door to let the dog back in. All right, guys, I am back. All right, so now that we've got the mustache roughed in there, we've got the eye sockets, we've got the nose, um, we've got the ear started, okay? So now we're gonna start adding details within this. We've gotta add this ear to get the side of our face on the back side of this mustache. Notice how I didn't just pop those. So if the eye, or if the ears, eyes, I apologize, if the eyes are gonna be in here, we'll put little reference lines, okay? Like so. We want the ears to be just above that eyebrow, which is gonna be right here and right in there. So we want the bottom of our um, ears to be right in line with the nose, the bottom of the nose. So there and there. Now, I wanna frame the, whoops, I wanna frame the outside of these ears and I want them to go back toward the face. 
Notice we don't have a lot of wood here, but we got just enough to, to get that going in there with that wood that we left earlier. So I'm gonna come, and this, whoever asked the question on the soft V, if I'd have used a V tool in here, that's where my line would have had to go, or I'd have had two you know, hard lines in there. So I wanna come just into this, like so. I'm gonna come just on the outside here. You don't have to, you know, the, the ear can be as, as big and wonky or small and petite. You know, you just wanna almost like just a reference of an ear. You don't have to get too crazy. Um, if you wanna really caricature it out and get it big and, and you know, like I say, that looks like Dumbo ears and we got wood that's hanging up in here. We could pop that out later. That's not a big deal. So with the chin being here and now we've got the ear established and that ear is being pushed outward, we know that our chin comes in and it goes just behind where that ear is going to be. But since that ear is pushed outward, we want our chin to connect right in here. So with the VTool, I'm just going to add a little line for reference. Same way here. I'm gonna add a little line for reference. Um, keeping in mind that when we're using that V-tool, we're not going straight into the face. We're laying that blade down to make that transition. You know, if we just come straight in here, then we gotta come back and cut something or feather it in or, or whatever we want. So now I can come on the outside of that mustache and hit my line there. And I'm going easy here. Whoops, trying not to get out of the uh, thing there. So now we need to go really deep in here and we need to bring that hat back to wherever it's going to be. So if we want our hat to start coming in here, I'm just going to add you some couple little things. Stop cuts, relief cuts is what my brain is trying to come up with, but it's not. So like that. Now what I find is if we turn this around backwards, we know a lot easier that that's going to be the center and we can come this way and back up this way. And if you look, we hit the line dead on. But for me, my brain tells me it's easier to see it from the back on a flat surface than it is to kind of transfer it over into these areas here. So with that being said, we're not going to hit that mustache. We're going to connect these two lines right in here like so. Now all of this stuff, because this is almost a relief carving, all of this needs to come back. And if we look at it from the side, you see how it gets thicker there? You can take your pencil if you want to and come from that ear and come down. But the easiest way I found to do it is if you want to get the big V tool out, you can, but I only pulled a few tools out. So I'm just going to lay that blade over on the side and then I'm going to start cutting until we get into that line where we made his chin, like so. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the appearance that that hat is now going behind his head as opposed to wrapping around in his chin. Same way here, I'm gonna come straight down on the side, going in with the V-tool, and I'm gonna follow that same cut line Again, don't get to the point where you're worried about, oh no, that's you know stuck in there and I gotta get that chip out every time because you can literally take the same V-tool and cut that chin out. Now, if you wanna, I don't know if it's a tip, trick, whatever, if you want this to appear thinner, you just take off that corner. So now what you have is you have a thicker piece of wood back here, but upon first glance, it looks a lot thinner than it is. So back up to the hat here, we've got a straight in cut or, or slightly down cut. We want this point in the very crease to touch the top up here. So you can come in here and take that one on back out of your way to round the brim of that hat. But what we wanna do is we want those two pieces to connect. So right in here, and I know y'all can probably hear that. My dog is, uh, Evidently uh, hearing something that I don't hear, so I apologize for the crazy dog barking in the background. So now you see how this is straight in, and now this looks like it's feathered into the hat. 
Same way here, we want to knock off that high corner. We still have plenty of uh, wood thickness in here. If you look at that, that's super thick. All we done was just faded it down into there. Um, to get the corner, or not the corner, but that uh, tip coming in, do the same thing that we did with the eyebrows. We're just gonna come in here and give it a point. This one's a little bit big, so I'm gonna step down to a little bit smaller gouge. And what I wanna start doing is rounding that in there and coming in there. Don't, you know, you don't have to go uh, super thin and you don't have to go super deep to give it the appearance of what you want. So now, We've got that dip in there. Let me move my light around here. It looks like it's creating a, a weird shadow there. And I'm about to lose a piece of paper off the side of the table here. So let me move that out of the way. All right. All right, so let me, whoops. There we go. Now we're hopefully back in line there. So that's what we were talking about with the, uh, the arch down in there. And if you look at the top view of this, see how we got a little bit of, a roundness, but we also, a little bit further back here than we are here, the way to correct that is literally just make it round. And if you notice, I haven't come in here yet. We can go do that later. We just wanna knock out this guy in here. So let's say that we want him to have a pronounced chin, but we also want to add a little smile in there. So with the corner that we took out with the gouge there, I'm cleaning it up. I'm gonna take out this triangle right in this corner here, a little bit deeper. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make his mouth um, appear rounder, but it's also gonna give you some shadow down in there. You see how this has no shadow and that has shadow for days. We only took out a small triangle to create that, that shadow in there. Same way here, we're gonna add a little triangle right in the corner there and then add the mouth. If you add a mouth on a flat surface, you're gonna constantly chase that mouth to make it look round. But if you add the mouth in a rounded area, it's gonna pop in there super easy, okay? And the way I add a mouth is you can do it with a V-tool if you want that jagged look, and let's do that. Now again, we're not gonna go straight in. We want that lip if you look, or if you, on your own face, the lip doesn't go straight in, it, it flows downward, but we want that pronounced chin, so that blade is gonna be what gives us the downward angle, like so. And we only need a tiny bit to represent a lip. So now, below the lips, we're gonna add another triangle right in there to give us some shadowing and we're gonna stay away from that chin because we want that chin to pop out. We want him to have one of those crazy, you know, I guess powerful chins is what it's called. So we're gonna add another small triangle right in there. And notice I'm not digging or picking, it's, it's loose. I'm just trying to push it one way. If you just push the chip one way or the other, you'll find out what corner it's holding in and then you can easily recut that. Uh, um, somebody said, hey, Brent, uh, Brent from, uh, down in, uh, Florida, he's also a fellow Marine and I'll share this bit of story. Uh, one of my Marine Corps buddies sent me a message today and he, he sent me a message that said, happy yellow footsteps day. So um, I got to doing a little bit of thinking, like, what is he talking about? And, uh, but today, 26 years ago, is when I was putting uh, feet on the painted feet in uh, Paris, Island, South, or Paris Island, South Carolina. So I guess this is my yellow footprint day 26 years ago. So um, now, this is our progress we got so far. So if you look, I mean, it's, it's pretty crude, but we can, we can see a face popping in there with, you know, pretty simple. We don't have to, you know, go crazy. You can, you can scoop this out. However you set up your eye and however you're comfortable with an eye, put that eye in there. Don't, you know, don't say just because, 
well, Dwayne done this video and I got to do it the way he done. No, a lot of people have a misconception of what uh, an instructional video is. This is just, hey, here's how I do it. You know, you can incorporate my techniques with, you know, your techniques, another carver's techniques. You know, when you start getting to the point where you say, hey, I'm going to add this to this and, and it turns out great. You know, that's that's what it's all about, guys. Don't don't get hung up on, oh, I want to carve like, you know, Carver X does, um, because at the end of the day, you're just going to get really good at carving like Carver X does. And, you know, that's that's where you're going to be for quite a long time. So, you know, when I when I was starting out, I took lessons from everybody I could and it was one of those things like, oh, I love how this guy does his eyes and this guy does his, you know, mustache and this guy does his cheeks. So, you know, make sure uh, last June 18th was 44 years for me. There you go, dude. So June 18th must be, uh, must be a, a, if today's, no, today's July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we were down there in the uh, great cool months in uh, Paris Island and uh, those of you who's ever been in the Marine Corps through Paris Island know that that was a very sarcastic comment because that's like that's like Satan's pitchfork hot down there. <laughs> so, all right, so we got this crazy little chin here. We've got some shadowing popping in here, and I'm going to get in here. You see how we come around those original cuts, and now that's left a small, and I'm going to get a, a tip of a knife. So, whoops, now we have this little mound and that little mound. That little secondary mound is going to become my sideburn. Now, you can take your small little V tool. I'm going to use a quarter inch, and what I want to do is go from the, here's the inside, that's the outside of the sideburn, and the inside of the ear. I'm just going to follow that line straight up to where it looks like it now tucks down in the hat, like so. And now you've got a two separate entities there. We can always come back and get that hat or you can add a wrinkle line in there. doesn't matter. Don't get hung up that it has to be carved perfect. All right. So now we've carved the outside of the um, sideburn. Now we're going to carve the inside of the sideburn, but we're not going to cut into the face. We're going to lay it on the side of the face and cut into the sideburn. We want the sideburn coming out of the face as opposed to the face, some sort of weird transitional. Same way here on this side, we don't have, it's there, but it's not quite as deep as the first one was. So again, I'm going to cut into the sideburn, not the ear. We don't want to have any weird angles that don't make sense. So here on this side, on the inside of the sideburn, I'm going to cut the sideburn from the angle of the face to the sideburn. Don't don't start putting angles in there that don't exist. Um, I'm gonna put the sideburn here. Doesn't matter where you put it, as long as it's even over here and it looks like even there. So if you wanna get fancy and technical, you could use the top of the hat and you can see it goes from here to there. But normally, I just eyeball it with the same V-tool. I'm going to shape the side of the face there. Now what we want to do is start getting some detail to separate this. We did, we did it quick and dirty, but now we want that hard line in there to separate that ear from the hat and the face. We've got a mustache there. We want that mustache to be off of the face, so we need to take the back side of this and I'm going to use the V tool. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting the face away from the mustache. I'm, I'm putting the face under the mustache, so to speak. Again, we're not trying to dig way in behind that. Same way here, this is higher than the mustache. So I'm going to lay this blade down and cut the face because I want the mustache to be proud um, of the face. Now you can do every bit of this with a knife and I'm gonna start with a knife in here. I'm gonna start doing some shaping and instead of those three or four um, cuts with the V-tool, I'm gonna have a nice crisp cut with just a knife in there, like so. All right, like so. We're gonna do it here. 
we're going to start cutting all those little deep little shadows in there. And I'm going to take off that high spot and a couple drag marks that my V tool left. And now I'm just going to knock off the high spots because we don't want to, we don't want a square looking mustache. We want the nice high spots. Now here, here's a prime example and I hope it comes in. Our mustache is going down through here and our face is going in through here. The way to get you some shadow is just do a nice crisp little triangle right in there. So now it separates that mustache from the face. We just want a nice little shadow right in there. Same way over here, you see how, let me move my light over here. You see how it goes and there's a transition between the two, but if we put a small little triangle sliver, a sliver triangle, whatever, we don't have to do it. We don't have to frame this whole mustache to give a nice separation. All you need to do is put you one little thing right in there. Okay. So now that we've got that, we're going to take off a high spot right there. Same way with triangles. We're going to connect the hat. And again, we're not going in. I'm slightly going to cut under the hat like so, and then I'm gonna come up here and come down beside the uh, sideburn. And what that done is it tucked it in there. You don't want a separate cut because you want the appearance that that sideburn is going under the hat, like so. Now, you see how we got like a, a, a wonky line there? All we have to do is knock off just a little bit right in there and Look at this triangle. Once we pop that little tiny triangle right in here, separating the ear from the sideburn, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's just a tiny two little triangles in there, but it, it really makes it pop. Now, when we're looking at this from the profile, that profile's okay, but you can literally come in here again and give him, you know, reshape that nose, just go a little deeper and look, it gives him an entirely different appearance. His eyes are still gonna be in the same place. Um, so with the eyes, you can draw these on here, but what I tell people is, and we'll do it on mine, this angle right here does not match this angle. So I'm gonna take just a little bit off right there and I'm gonna match those two angles. If these two angles, and even if you're using a gouge in there, if the angles match, your eyes will match. You don't have to draw a bunch of stuff in there for them to match. So I'm gonna take, before we get onto the eyes, I'm gonna take and run a gouge from the upper part of the nostril up into that, like so. And I'm gonna go on the outside, upper part of the nostril into there. And what I'm gonna do is following the same angle, I'm gonna pop those out like so. All right, same way here, not changing the angle. Um, those of you who's ever sat down with me, I, I say that like a million times, don't change the angle. We don't wanna have facets on the face that don't exist and we don't want our nose to look like we took a separate piece of wood and glued it on there. So that's why I'm saying, you know, you cut away from the face or, you know, you cut away from the nose and you're, you're not undercutting, you're not undercutting this. You know, I use the expression that, you know, can you see, you know, one side or the other? So why are we cutting so deep in an angle? Um, you know, nice, crisp, clean lines. I'm gonna finish this side up here like we did earlier, but I'm not gonna explain it. I'm gonna cut that sideburn in and give us some detail up in there, like so. And all I'm doing is creating essentially a, a triangle on each side of the sideburn to separate the ear and the, uh, the sideburn from the hat and the face. So again, with those two, I got a little hanger right on top there. And now I'm gonna come and smooth, whoops, 
I'm gonna come and smooth that hat with that wonky, wonky line. You know, don't don't change the angles on everything is what I'm saying. You know, you change the angle just a little bit and it, it starts looking kind of funny because, you know, the the face or fingers or hands or you know, whatever, they don't they don't move beyond bones. And while we're here, triangle on the bottom of the ear and then separate the ear from the hat like we did earlier. Uh, I'm trying to get this to where y'all can see it. So it's just a triangle there. We want to thin that hat by knocking off the corner on the outside. And I'm going to put just a little shadow right in there. Like so. All right. So now we got the crunchy chin, got the mustache in there, got the nose, the eyes. Um, let's set these nostrils in here. The reason I say carve downward instead of straight into the bottom of the nose, because now we're going to use whatever gouge fits the nose that you carved. All right. And we're going to come slightly straight in. If we would cut this straight in to begin with, and then you have to use that gouge and push upward, you don't have much wood up here. And that's where we break off these wings on the side of our nose. So I'm going to come in here on this side, cutting slightly in. And if you notice, I'm going to go up a little bit more with this one. But if you notice, I didn't go crazy. You see those boogers hanging out of his nostrils there now? This is a very critical cut. You take the tip of your knife and you push it away. You take the tip of your knife and you push it away. All you're doing, don't go in there and start twisting and you're going to miss the mark and you're going to get a bunch of fuzzies up in there. Now, if you look, I've got a little fuzzy hanging right there. What I will do is I'll come in the center of that hole and I'll cut a triangle up in there and then I will slice it out on the bottom. And now we, it looks like it goes twice as deep in there. Let me get this light around here. Oh, that was... You see, well, see how it goes a lot? Because the, the tip of that gives you the appearance that it's going deeper. Uh, optical illusion, whatever you want to call it. But if you look at the back of a tip versus trying to get that hole up in there, and see there's the other side with a slight triangle in there. All right. So back to the eyes. As long as your arches or your angles meet up, all you have to do is follow those arches or angles. So if I'm following that arch or angle right there and I follow it the same distance. So in other words, if I go a 16th below that arch and I follow that arch and I go a 16th over here, I don't have to draw lines everywhere. I know it's going to be equal. So the rule of thumb is everything above the iris gets carved upward everything below the iris gets carved downward so what i'm going to do is with the v tool slightly up i'm going to follow just on that line to the bridge of that nose and then i'm going to flip it over and i'm going to again i got to carve downward now because it's above the iris i'm going to do the same thing here but i'm going to go on the outside because i'm lazy and don't want to have to move my wood again so now when I flip it over, I'm going to be carving downward and then back toward the bridge of that nose. Now, with that, it looks kind of creepy. <laughs> with that, we're going to put the eyeballs in there. If I want the eyeball right here, I'm going to start just below that. A slight little arch down into there. And honestly, it's, it's literally that simple. Now, what you can do is if we say we're this much, you can put one little dot there. I don't know if that's going to show up. You can put one little dot. My arch needs to go to up there, okay? So if we take our arch and go up to that point and then back down, those eyeballs should pretty much match. Now, this one looks like I went at a little bit different angle, so all I have to do is just take a little bit more right out there. Now they should match. Um, you can take a gouge on the bottom. I like to come in 
and just take a little bit more out to create another little thing in there. That's going to be the bottom of his uh, eye socket. So now that we're down in here, we want to take these corners out again below the cut or below the iris is carved downward, above the iris is carved upward. And I want to come and start taking that out in small little cuts. I always tell people cut downward because you have more wood stopping that cut in his cheek down here than you do in that upper eyelid. That upper eyelid gets pretty thin. Um, well, I, I apologize. I missed a, I missed a step. The, um, the line that we created in there becomes the bottom. So I didn't draw a bottom line on there. The bottom of that cut we originally makes makes the, uh, bottom part of his eye. So you don't even have to carve the bottom if you're, um, if your initial lines in there are even. I try to cut all of these. I'd, I'd much rather slow all of my time down here than twisting and picking. You start twisting and picking in these uh, eyeballs and it's, it's going to look really, really, um, it's going to look like you've twisted and picked in there. I mean, no, no offense, but, you know, nice, consistent cuts. Again, everything below the iris gets carved downward. Everything above the iris gets carved upward. And I was just carving and talking away. I hope I wasn't out of screen during most of that, guys. Um, a lot of books and magazines when I was growing up and carving, so to speak, you know, one of them would say, take, when you're cutting that corner out, they'd say, take a third of that out as a chip. And then some of them would take, take a quarter out. I just say the chip needs to come out, but your, your final cut needs to come toward the center of the eye. So in other words, don't be down in here, you know, don't, don't be carving in this way. You want to be carving in this way to round that into there. You start taking out triangles right in here and you're going to end up with a square eyeball in uh, that place right in there. Now, if we want to put some eye bags underneath it, again, the cuts go downward away from the eye. I'm just using a V tool like so, and then a V-tool over here like so, and then do the center cut. Now, in the corner of the eye, I'll just take where all three of those lines meet and just make me a line that kind of explodes out. You don't want it to explode. You want it to be cut, but you get what I'm saying. You don't have to go in there. So now the V-tool, I want to clean up that sideburn a little bit more there. Clean up the sideburn a little bit more there. I'm going to come with the V-tool, clean up the ear. I still got a pencil line there from the original drawing. Clean up the pencil line there. Clean up this little spot right here. And I got a little furry hanger friend right there. And then it fell into that crack we made earlier, so let's... And it sounds like I'm popping, I promise you guys. I'm, I'm not popping and digging. Um, same way that we did in here, we want to do the same way. We want to carve a triangle right in there to frame the face away from the hat. So a good triangle right there. And then a good triangle right in here. We're going to frame that face away from the hat like so and that is your whoops that is your basic little face built in a corner making you a little cowboy deal um we still got quite a few people on here and as long as people are on we'll just keep going and and uh go for it so now once i get to this point i want to make sure that this guy is as clean as he can be, no pencil lines, 
because now I'm probably going to start holding the face, so you want all those pencil lines off of the face. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and address the back of this. You see how we've got a swoop? We want to put some lines in there. Even though you're probably not going to see them, when you look at it you know, from the side, you don't want to see it going from the brim of the hat up to the top of this. So I just put me a, a few little things. Now I'm not changing and bringing that hat in. I still want it to fit on the face. I just want a separate transitional line in there and the same way here. I just want a nice crisp little cut in there. I want to look at the top, whoops. I want to look at the top and make sure it's rounded and go ahead and take all these bandsaw or machine marks off because we want it to look carved. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm the world's worst at finishing a carving and I'll be halfway through paint and I'll see a uh, bandsaw mark, you know, where I didn't even carve anything on that entire carving. Now, if you want to, very carefully, you can put you some shadow lines in there just like so. You don't have to have a lot, but it, it tells your brain, hey, there's a, a nice deeper transition in there than there actually is. I don't go crazy in here, but if you want it to look nice and pointed, run you a V-tool right through there, and then run you a V-tool right through there. And what that does is it gives you a point in there to where it's actually bent up as opposed to this nice, delicate, rounded spot. Um, just for the creepy aspect, I can't, I can't stand looking at a carving in this position. It, it you know, and, and this may be a something that I inadvertently picked up from Dave Stetson, um, but I always kind of draw my eyes in there just because those blank eyes just look creepy as they can be to me. I use just a Sharpie marker um, because again, I find if we're using a pencil in there, again, that, that pencil will transfer and this uh, Sharpie marker will not. Once it's dry, it's dry. And you can paint right over this stuff. But once you have some eyes in there, let me get my, once you have some eyes in there, it, uh, it takes on a new, a new meaning as opposed to just a creepy zombie-like um, carving. So um, we got about 30 people on here. So do we want to do a full body? Do we want to do, or not a full body, do we want to do like body and shoulders? Do we want to do some sort of chingadera, uh, bandana? Um, is there anything somebody wants to see or re-explain real quick before we move on, move on to the bottom of this? What I'm doing here is I'm just separating the the mustache, oops, the mustache from the chin on the bottom there. So any preference on what we do on the bottom here? I guess first one gets it. We want a backwards bandana. Do we want the bandana here? Do we want a neckline? What do we want? Uh, bandana, please. Do we want a neck or no neck? Do we want that bandana um, close to the neck or do we want to put a neck on the bottom of this guy? I know I'm giving you lots of options here. Dean Irvin, bandana, please. All right, Mr. Dean, bandana it is. Um, Chicka, Chippa, Chingadera, Chingadera. <laughs> Phil. Um, a lot of people don't even probably uh, know what a Chingadera is. All right. Um, and then we've got a, a comment for the neck. All right, so let's do, um, we're not going to do a, a chingadera fill. <laughs> so from, if you, if you take, um, your neck, believe it or not, is, is about right in here. You see what I'm saying? So if our neck comes down from the inside of the ears there, all right, so we don't need a neck this long, but let's say we want a neck in there. And this is the reason up front, I didn't take all this wood off when I'm trying to cut under the chin. All right, so what I want to do is establish where's my neck going to be, but again, from that neck, um, we want to come out with a bandana somewhere. So that's the outside of the bandana, outside of the bandana. We want a neck that lives in this, so let's put our neck in here, and let's do, um, we're going to add a little wood, and I told you we couldn't add wood, but if we didn't take it, we've already have it. Um, 
a common misconception that I've done for years, and, and I'll, I'll tell on myself, um, <laughs> and I didn't find out till probably several months ago, and I'm still guilty of it. Let's, uh, what do we got here? You know, I've only got, on this guy here, I've only got one piece hanging down, but when you tie a bandana, the strings usually come out on each side. A lot of times I've seen cowboys with the two tabs that come down in the same spot, but we need a, we need a separation. When you tie your shoe, the strings don't come out in the same spot. So if we put one guy here, we want to put another guy on the outside. And I'm just going to take a gouge and get rid of that so my line doesn't mess with me. So we want to not, we want two tabs, we want a neck, and then we want something. Since we have a lot of room, let's just do it that it's coming down behind here, and then it's going to come up. Um, I like clothing to not be balanced. You know, if we come straight down here and it hangs perfectly level, it, it kind of gets boring. So if you got a bandana, offset it or something like that. Okay, so we need to knock all of this out and put these two tabs on top of this bandana. So we're going to go that pretty quick. I'm going to, first of all, knock that down. Yes, we are going to put a neck in there, but again, our neck doesn't stick out past our nose. So we got a ways to go, but we also want to get all of these ugly lines off and we want to start coming in here pretty hard on the side. We're not going to blast into our hat. So these are very deliberate cuts. We're going to get the bandsaw mark off cause we know that we just had to come a little bit further in there like so. Now, same way here on the opposite side. We're gonna come in here just making nice little scoop cuts. So once we get close to that knife, we can start making stop cuts and relief cuts. Now, we know that our neck is gonna come in here, but we're gonna have that knot holding over it a little bit. So our neck is gonna come like so. So the way I do that is I will turn the gouge. Now I don't wanna cut into the neck, this side blade is gonna be coming like we did on the hat, and I'm gonna start putting that layer. So what I will do is start scooping this cut on the side. What you're actually doing is you're pushing the neck down and you're making the bandana come off of the neck. So I'm only worried about one side at this point. Again, not cutting straight in with the V-tool. The V-tool is laid over on its side. So now that we've got that deep in there, we know that our bandana and our tassel is still here. I wanna address the opposite side of the neck. Same way, turning the V-tool over the opposite way, I'm gonna start coming up in there. Now these are not aggressive cuts. These are very controlled cuts. We don't wanna get in there and get here. Oops, I'm sorry. We don't want to get here and be pushing so hard that we're putting a bunch of stab marks in the bottom of our mustache here. So now that I get this down, I can come in here on the bottom of my mustache and just touch that and they should pop right out. Now, our chin, whoops, our chin comes in here and now you can, well, let's do it from this side. Um, uh, so now we can see we've got a, a lump in there. All we want to do is start tickling that and rounding it to where it's coming under that chin and down into the bandana. And that's all it takes is to start getting... Now, I'm going to stop about right there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over under that chin with a gouge. There's no... I, I don't want to say there's no, because there's every time I say, oh, that don't happen, I'll see a guy in Walmart or, you know, somewhere else the next day, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it does happen. But again, so that's, that's all you need is just to push that down there. But I want to transition from the bottom of the chin with a gouge, not so much a V-tool or a knife line in there. And again, you can now come back here, smooth all of this out. Now, 
that bandana. And I got one hanging right there. Okay. If it don't come off when you're cutting it, sometimes blowing helps. All right. So I'm just taking the, uh, the hard line off there. So now we're going to come in. Again, blade laid over on its side. We want that knot to be higher. I don't like a round knot, but I will almost every time draw a round circle. But again, I just want, you know, a reference. But I, I do not put a round knot. Okay? Now that we've got that, we're going to take off all of the ugly pencil lines and the bandsaw marks like so. And again, these hard cuts will be what you do to get it to not look super round because we don't want a knot to look super round. So now we've got a crazy little cut in there. Okay, so now the back side of this knot, we have to get kind of creative in that cut there because it's close to the face and chin and we don't have room to come in from this way. So we're gonna take this and separate right there from the hat. And this is gonna be the bandana that's coming back this way. And we're gonna take that triangle out. You don't have to have much like so. And I don't know what it's doing at y'all's neck of the woods, but it just stopped raining here a while ago and it was like monsoon season. It was crazy. So now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start shaping out, and I can just get rid of that, but I'm gonna start shaping out all this stuff on the bottom, like so. So now you see we got some there and for purposes of holding it, I'll do it in sort of a relief um, category. We're gonna pull that big V tool out where I showed for reference earlier. I'm gonna lay it down on its side, like so. And I didn't go all the way down, so let's lay it. So now we're gonna lay it down on this side. And I don't care if I cut over into that one, it can be thinner. But again, my main thing with showing y'all this is the angle, not necessarily the cut. So now I don't have to come back with a knife and, and shave and feather all that stuff back up in because I've, I've went in with the angle that I wanted with the V-tool and it's already taken care of that for me, like so. So, whoops. There we go, we got our two tabs hanging off of there. And I don't like that weird thing in the knot. So again, with the V tool, I'm just gonna pop it right in there. I know that that's the hat now. So I'm gonna come in and just clean those up and put me a cut right in there. I'm gonna get rid of all of my bandsaw marks, just knocking off the corners the flat spot, and all of our original pencil lines that we drew for reference. Um, one of the, you know, we always look at things and, you know, explain things and whatever. The best thing I could ever tell you on a bandana is get you a, you know, if you don't have an actual bandana, you know, get you a washcloth or a uh, paper towel even and fold it up and it'll give you a knot. But when you have this line, when you have this line coming into the knot, and then you have this part that's coming into the knot, see our bandana's gonna do something funky, funky over here. But we got these two strings, this one coming into the knot, and then this one coming into the knot. You know, if I don't care how you wrap the knot, one of these knots, the cuts or the fibers are going to be going this way and the other one is going to be going this way okay regardless of which side it is i've off more often than not i see let me see when it's done here's when it's done um more often than not i see all of these cut lines going in the same direction to me that is a shattered glass look if you look these 
this rope or this bandana is going this way. This rope and bandana is going this way. So mix those up. Do not have the fibers going the same direction. That's not how a knot works. They're not going to both go into each other and something's on the back holding them together. So one fiber or, or direction needs to go one way. The other direction needs to go the other way. So if we want to put this direction, and I'll even change it up a little bit. Let's, let's put an angle on it like so, okay? So what I want to do is clean that up, put me a little triangle right in there, because again, you don't want them to, to be perfectly meeting in the corner, right? And then a tiny little triangle right in there, and I want to knock off all these high spots. I want to knock off all these high spots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this guy go in, and I want to make this guy go up. I'm not going to put a continuous line. I'm going to put a couple representation lines that way, and maybe two downward. So now that those lines are going this way, I want these lines to go into that knot. So this fabric goes this way down into that knot like so. And now I can take that knife and just tickle right in the corner there. Now I'm going to scoop a little bit out in both of these tassels to where it's bunching back up into that knot. And here we're going to thin that up just a crisp little wedge right in there. So now you can put as little or as many as you want. I, th you know, me, I, you know, I used to go overboard with trying to get every little detail and stuff in there. And now I'm more along the edges of give me just enough. Give me the representation because it looks better. So there's our knot. We got some some boogers hanging down here. Let's clean those up real quick because they'll mess with my brain probably more than y'all's. Um, like so. And like so. Okay. So now we want this. And I'm, I've kind of, I want to, I want to, I want a harder angle. I've looked at that. Um, as I was carving, I want a harder angle. And let's say for reference sake, we have another one because we've folded that bandana in two. I hope that makes sense. You know, you, you flip them over and they're not folded exactly right. Then you put it around your neck. So we have two two tabs hanging over here. We want the corners to be out here. Same way with the V-tool. I want this part to be higher, so I lay my blade down this way. So I'm going to come up into there. And biggest tip I could ever give you is don't carve clothing on a piece this big. The clothing shouldn't be thicker than the clothes the clothing you're wearing as a human. You know, I've seen people go in here and try to make this thing like an eighth of an inch thick. You only need a little bit because this is a bandana on a really small guy. You don't need this clothing super thick. You just need to have the shadow that it's um, two pieces. So, I mean, I'm, I'm working toward that 16th inch range. So I'm going to take and get off these bandsaw marks. Now, a lot of people want to put wrinkles and, and this and that, but if that is a corner and we're making a point there, we don't need any wrinkles in there because the wrinkles would affect this corner, okay? So my wrinkles need to be right here where it's twisting up in behind his neck and then a little bit where it's coming into here. And that's it. I don't need any wrinkles down in this area. 
And I know that somebody's probably saying, well, you know, if I don't have any lines in there, that kind of looks boring. Yeah, it does, but, you know, sometimes less is more. So I'm going to put two little wrinkle lines in there, and I'm going to put two or three up in here. And I don't want those wrinkles to be continuous, so I'm going to overlap like so. Okay? So now if you wanted to, you know, maybe you could paint your little, uh, you could get a nice little pattern here when you're painting it that you're not going to be able to get up in here. So the bottom part of this bandana is going to come underneath that one. And I hope they're, um, what does that say? Uh, bright sunshine and hot something. Uh, there was a question I seen. It said, bright sunshine and hot as heck here in... Oh, yeah, SoCal. I bet it is out there, man. Heard, uh, seen on the Facebook, um, I think Utah or something was having some forest fires or something. That's crazy. But, yeah, I think it was in the, uh, it was in the upper 90s here today, and it just started exploding with the, uh, the rain, and it, it came out of nowhere. We would, uh, we came back from lunch, and all of a sudden it just went berserk. So, all right, so back to this. I'm going to take right here because we said we don't really like any sharp corners. I'm just gonna tickle those corners off, which is also gonna get rid of the pencil lines. And here, again, I've got a 16th here, but it kinda jets way out. So I'm gonna come down here and bring it back up to that 16th. And for those of you who just started popping on, I was explaining that our layering in our clothes doesn't have to be super thick. If you're wearing a T-shirt right now, and, or, or, you know, hopefully nobody's wearing a jacket. Um, if you're wearing a t-shirt or a flannel shirt or whatever, and you feel the thickness of that shirt and you're carving something and you're putting a shirt that's thicker than the one you're carving, you're carving those lines too deep. And, you know, our brain tells us, oh, to get a good carve, we need to carve it deeper. You need to carve it deeper in the shadow points as opposed to uh, those clothing layers. So back to our, our large VTool. We could do it with a small VTool, but since I've got the large one out here, now this bottom one, because we're going to say that, you know, all of this is gone away from it. Let me just use a knife because all of this is gone. You know, I'm not worried that that's a half inch thick. We'll back cut that a little bit. And let's just do this just to give me where my line is, like so, because I wanna get all of that. I don't know if y'all can see that. I got a bunch of uh, pencil lines right in there and I can see it starting to smear already. So I'm gonna get those gone, like so. And I just cut the line in there just so when I cut the pencil lines off, I can see it. I'm gonna lay this down, like so. And now, even though I don't want to sound like I'm catch 22 in anybody, even though this layer and this layer matches, I want to create a shadow point right in there that it is a little bit deeper. But again, it's a place for that eye to focus. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. I just want to create a little shadow point down in there that's a little deeper. And it gives you a nice, crisp corner in there. Give me one second. I gotta, oh, I think I hear somebody. Let Shelby in, please. Um, my daughter came to my rescue to let her dog in. Those of you who are thinking about getting a dog and don't have the luxury of owning one, don't. Um, I love our dog to death and I would probably go to battle to protect her, but man, they wanna be let out like, especially hours, man. She wants to be let out like every 30 seconds. She is yard trained. She will not leave the yard, but if she hears a bird or sees anything, she's got to go out and bark at it. And it's like, holy cow. Okay, so I've got, I'm just cleaning up a few little fuzzies here and there. And what I'm going to do underneath is Dean, I think, said he wanted to see that neckline. But if we see that neck that's in there, again, I'm not cutting. I'm not cutting directly into the neck. I want to come and cut with the neck. 
like so. And then I want to cut with the bandana this way. We're not going to create a weird angle. What we're doing is we're just creating a shadow point down in there, but you have to move my, move my light in there. We're creating a shadow point down in there. Same way here. We just want a nice little shadow line down in there. And what that does is it separates your paint. When you go to paint this, it's not gonna bleed from the neck down into the thing. My wife's gonna kill me because I just blew those chips and they went all over the dining room table. That's where I'm carving it right now. I've got a little mat down here, but yeah, she's uh, I usually sweep up, but I inadvertently blew the chips off of this and I just seen the, the chips fly across the uh, dining room table and went everywhere, so. All right, so there we go. Let's get rid of the, uh, you know, whatever bandsaw marks. Whoops, I'm off camera. All I'm doing is just knocking these bandsaw marks off. That's that's all I'm doing. You know, you can ultimately leave this guy here if you want to go back and whittle all this out or if you want to lay it straight down and cut all this mess out on the bandsaw, you can literally just have the thing there. But for purposes of this, I was using it to hold on to. Um, so that, I don't see if I can get it. There's your profile. There's your little cowboy face with the two. And, and this in here, guys, is endless. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can do them just, you know, rolled up, balled up. I mean, even on this guy right here, it's not going to hurt you to come back and make a sharp line to where that guy now is folded. You see what I'm saying? You could even come in here and make a sharp line and create that as the second bandana. And that's usually what that fold is, is indicating. But I'm telling you, this is a finished carving. You can always go back and just add one little thing and, and change a lot to the carving. You know, 90% of this is manipulating corners and triangles down in there. I think that's about all I can give you guys um, other than just putting some little reference points here for the ear. And I'm not gonna insult anybody's intelligence on hair because hair is as quick <laughs> and as simple as you want to make it. You don't have to fear hair. The fear of hair for me it took me a long time to realize I wasn't that bad at doing hair. I had dull tools. Um, so if your tools are sharp, all you gotta do is pop some stuff in here. Um, the eyebrows, if you're doing eyebrows, just think of the old paper um, fans. So when you open that fan up, the center of that goes straight up and then they, you know, they go each way. So in other words, I gotta roll the tape here. If this is the top of our fan, think of how those ridges goes, and that's how I do my eyebrows. So if this is the center of the eyebrows, the cuts continually or gradually start going until the side of the face like that. Same way with mustache, just pop some stuff in there. Guys, I hope y'all have a, uh, a great Saturday. I hope maybe you learned something. If you didn't, at least I got to carve and feel like I was talking to somebody. Um, this social distancing and all the stuff being shut down is, is driving everyone bonkers because we can't get out there. Um, but hopefully uh, that's changing soon and uh, we'll get back into the, uh, the clubs and the uh, shows that are out there. Guys, have a great weekend. Um, keep carving and take care of each other. Bye-bye.